Ho, ho, ho! Happy Hollow Victories, where we don't have to check twice. Both of these films are naughty. I'm your host, Matt, joined as always by my Holly Jolly co host. Uh, hello, I'm Bemis 100. <laughs> That's a good reference. Everyone That's will good, understand every, that reference. Oh, yeah. Everyone will understand that. It'll be like. It'll be like one of our friends watching, go like, ha, I get it. No, I'm Mackle. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's our very special Christmas episode. We've looked at two of the worst Christmas specials, worst animated Christmas specials of all time. Both aired on TV only once. So, <laughs> um, it's, it's The Christmas Tree from 1991 and Rhapsody Street Kids from 2002. Yes. An, an excellent matchup if ever there was one. Oh, for sure, for sure. Two, two Christmas classics, really. <laughs> um, two movies that have gained a lot of popularity on the internet lately. Yeah. Because I, I feel like, I don't know, five, six years ago, no one even knew what these movies were. Yeah, uh, the first review I remember of The Christmas Tree was the Nostalgia Critic review of it. Maybe someone beat him to it, but that's the first one that I was aware of. Ben Phelis did it, Peanut Butter Gamer did it, Saber Spark did it. I'm actually looking at Saber Spark's thumbnail right now, and he drew the kids really creepy, or whoever did the thumbnail drew the kids really creepily as a joke because the kids are really creepy in that movie. But I gotta say, they actually look less creepy in this thumbnail where they're supposed to look scary. Because they got, like, basic things correct. The eyes are really bad, but we'll get to it. <laughs> uh, why don't you start us off by telling us about The Christmas Tree? The Christmas Tree is a 1991 movie directed by Flamarion Fiera. My favorite uh, Eevee Lucian. Yes, Flareon. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, not uh, This might be the only movie this guy ever directed. He did a little bit of work on... Phineas and Ferb and He-Man and She-Ra. So you got the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. You got some notable things on here, you know? Um, He's done animation work. This yeah, is Tiny Toons. Yeah, so maybe he might... We'll discredit this guy completely, but this movie I don't even under... I don't, I don't even understand why this exists. It doesn't seem like it's fulfilling any sort of purpose whatsoever, like... It doesn't even feel like a small... Like, last week I was able to... Well, last month I was able to give Book of Henry some credit, saying, oh, it's at least it's someone's baby. This one's not marketable, but it also doesn't seem like the people who made it wanted to make it. Anyways, I should actually describe the plot. Um, it's about an orphanage that has a very um, abusive owner who mistreats all the kids and takes the money that the mayor gives them for her own her own benefit, her own use, named I think Mrs. Mavilda. Yes. Uh, and then this uh, new family comes into town, and the mother starts working at the orphanage, and her two kids stay there while the dad's off doing God knows what. And and she's nice, and the kids like her, but Mrs. Mavilda doesn't like, or Miss Mavilda doesn't like that the kids are getting along with her, and she wants her gone. So she makes this big scheme to frame her for a crime, and that goes absolutely nowhere. They actually kind of just forget that that was part of the plot entirely and disregard it. Um, and then she says, oh, I can just fire her, which, okay, maybe do that first before you go into this big uh, big <laughs> controversy. Yeah, like, like what, what was the point of this plot to get her fired if you could just fire her? Um... It's a mess. I, I it, There's parts of it that kind of make me laugh, and most of them are just, like, really awkward, um, like, moments or just errors in the animation. Oh, yeah. There's, sh occasionally, it will quickly cut to a shot that just catches you off guard so much. Like, there's this really creepy shot of Santa near the end of it that they just throw in for, like, half a second, then it cuts back. It's, like, that's, it's, like, almost comedic. Like, this seems like the kind of thing that someone would do in, like, a fuck, like, as a funny edit, but it's being done in... 100% sincerely. Uh, yeah. So you and I were talking about this. For the most part, the characters we think are original, but there are moments that just seem like, is this traced? 
is this traced from something? Because mm-hmm. there's a scene where a bear shows up, and the bear looks shockingly like Baloo from Jungle Book. Like, the eyes are different, but other than that, it looks like Baloo. And then you see this shot of Santa, and it's like they've clearly traced, like, a Christmas card or something to get this shot of Santa. Because later, he's, like, moving and animated, and he looks completely different when he's animated. Yeah. But the one still frame of him looks totally different. Yeah. It's really weird. It's really weird. There, there's, like, a couple of parts where I was just like, this looks familiar. I feel like I've seen this before, where it's like directly being traced over something and it's a lazy movie i would not put it past them to do that to trace a bunch of shit um yeah. occasionally they just trace something already in the movie there's a car- there's a citizen in the town that looks identical to the mayor the clothes are just different the animation is so odd because it's incredibly lazy in some places but on the other hand there's moments where the animation gets really fluid like a character will be talking and, like, they'll turn their head and the hair will move, like, very fluidly. Like, it's 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 well-animated hair and you're like, why are you putting effort into this but nothing else? Yeah, I don't know. Because there's scenes where, like, characters are talking and, like, their whole face is jiggling and their eyes are staying perfectly still. It's so freaky. The Part eyes in general want- are kind of freaky. Yeah, well, part of me wants to, like, say, like, oh, it was just kind of an incompetent or rushed movie where, like, oh, the people behind it probably actually cared about it, but they just, they just weren't good at what they did. But I don't even know that because it's, like, even the script, like, there's bad scripts and then there's scripts that are rushing to the end. Like, it's, like, it's uh, the way I described it to you, it feels like the people writing the script were so inconvenienced by it. They are rushing through scenes. There's like, oh, we need, they get to them to go to the North Pole. Uh, the dog makes noise and like, oh, the dog can take us to the North Pole. It's like, it, it's so effortless. I, I've i never, I don't think, yeah. in terms of writing, I don't think I've seen such an effortless movie before. But it's not 100% effortless is the thing. Like there's a yeah. little bit of effort in parts and you're like, Why? Either it's totally effortless, or you should try harder. Why are you putting effort into some things? Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I wonder if there's any, like... Anyone who's worked on the... Excuse me. I wonder if there's anyone who's worked on the movie... That has said anything about it. From what I saw, uh, the director is the only one who's done, like, anything else... Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Flammarion Ferreira, Ferreria. He's he's done animation for TV shows. Everyone else, this is their only credit. Yeah, I mean, definitely can see that with the voice actors. <laughs> Miss Mavilda is the best one, and she's not good. It's just she's she's shouting, she's showing emotion. It's it's really awkward, and I can't call it a good performance by any means whatsoever. But it, 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 there's it would- effort. It would be a weak performance in a better movie, but in this movie, it's the only good performance. Yeah. My my favorite character is the fucking dad who disappears for most of the movie because he has so little emotion about fucking <laughs> anything. He's just like, goodbye, family. I'll see you on Christmas. If everybody in your life talked like he did, would you even want to be alive anymore? <laughs> I was gonna say, okay, I'm gonna okay. The distributor is Family Home Entertainment. I'm opening that in another tab real quick, but uh, I want to see what the, I want to see what else they've made, what other projects they've got in the works. But no, um, it got according to this article here or the, the information I'm getting on Google. It says it aired one time on December fourteenth, nineteen ninety one, on the USA Network. By the way, we're hitting the thirty year anniversary move anniversary of this movie. If I haven't said that already. Yeah, happy 30th anniversary, Christmas tree. But it's like full release um, to video was on September 11th, 1991. Hmm. We should have known. We should have known. Yeah. Like, I know. Like, you know, 9 11, 10 years earlier, we all had another disaster. Yeah. Absolutely. That's also the day, uh, 
Big Lebowski takes place on. So. Oh wow! Really? <laughs> yeah, there's a scene where he's writing a check and he dates it to uh, uh, September 11th, 1991. So, so Big Lebowski could have watched this movie. He could have like bought this on VHS and watched it. Can't believe the Cohen brothers cut that scene. I'm looking at Family Home Entertainment to see what else they made, and there's some uh, there's some beloved things on here. Hold on, wait. They might have. Sh- they might just have been the distributor. Yeah. Well, I, they also have some hated things on here, like Drop Dead Fred is one that's showing up. Um, but you know they got that- Barbie and the Nutcracker. They got the Transformers movie. They got Jonah, the Veggie Tales movie. Oh yeah, that sounds like they're the distributor then. Yeah. Uh, Drop Dead Fred, were you about to defend that? Because I've never seen it, I've just heard bad things. I was gonna say, even that is miles ahead of Christmas Tree. Oh yeah, I mean, Christmas Tree, um, it's, hmm, I don't know if, you know what, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen just because it's short. (laughs) You can get through it, and there's some parts that kind of made me laugh. And I mean, if we're, we're talking in the realm of animation, you have to consider that stuff like Dingo Pictures exists. Yeah, and I did so, watch Wabu. So, this is at least not Dingo Pictures. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did talk about some of the voice acting, but I think we need to address the kid whose voice is like... It, it's an adult voice poorly pitch shifted up, so it, he ends up sounding like a robot. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, the voice didn't... <laughs> work at all i was so weird it was like there's so many points in this movie where it's like i feel like they if anyone cared about it even the slightest bit they could have seen something and said okay let's do something different with this they could have looked at the first drawing the first frame of animation on all the characters with big huge ass pupil eyes and said okay that doesn't look good let's make the pupil smaller they did with the mayor the mayor character, his pupils are a normal size. He doesn't look nearly as bad as anyone else in the movie. Um, it's not like it's still it's still not like good animation with him or anything, but he looks significantly better because his eyes aren't creepy as hell. Um, and with that kid's voice, I think one line with that they could have been like, "Okay, let's not do this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is this movie? What? Like, a lot of, like, bad Christmas movies I can sort of write off, because, like, of course, e- everyone wants to make a Christmas movie, right? Because if your Christmas movie gets big, you get residual checks every year. Yeah. But at some point, you have to put a little effort into the thing you're making. Yeah. Absolutely. I... I'm trying to think if there's, like, a more effortless Christmas movie I've seen. Uh, I mean, there's another one, but we'll we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. There's, there's really awkward animation errors. Like, there, there's a shot where Mrs. Mavilda is, like, stepping into a room, and you see just, like, her legs walk in, like she's <laughs> fucking cow and chicken's parents. And then all of a sudden her torso appears on top of her legs. And it's Uh really obvious. It's not just like one or two frames. It is like a full second of just legs. There's frequent scenes where just random things are stuttering and moving out of control. You mentioned like part of the mayor's hat was like going (laughs) like moving all over the fucking place. Um there's a shot where the mom is talking and her entire body, everything on her body is moving except her eyes that are staying in, like, are staying completely that, still in the center. That happened several times in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was weird. It was like they were dr- doing the thing in animation where you draw over the same frame over and over again to make it feel a little bit more lively. But, uh, but they weren't doing it for the eyes. <laughs> Why the eyes? Why are the eyes the thing that you're not redrawing? Why is that where you're like, okay, we can't draw the eyes multiple times? We're we're talking about all the technical aspects. The story is also so effortless. Like, none of it makes sense. Like, this guy moves to a town, 
And the mayor's like, oh, sorry, you're going to have to live by yourself, but uh, your wife and kids can stay at the orphanage and help them out there. And he's just like, yeah, okay, uh, that's that's fine. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, the, the Mrs. Mavilda is betting away all of the money she's been given for the orphan kids, which is... You'd think she'd win once, right? She loses every single time. Surely she'd win once, right? But she's betting away all their money and, and you know, spending what little money they have on herself rather than the kids. And it's like... And when uh, the lead character, whose name has escaped me, figures this out, she's like... Oh, when when the mayor finds out about this, you'll be fired. And it's like, yeah, why don't you just tell him? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, just 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 tell him what she's doing. Well, what, what Miss what what Miss Mavilda says is like, hey, if you tell him, you'll be out on the streets. And it's like, no, no, you will be because he's gonna yeah. fire you, and you're not gonna have the authority to do that anymore. Because that's what happens at the end. She gets fired, and and the lady and her husband take over the orphanage. She doesn't even get fired. The mayor is just like, yeah, I want to have a word with you. You <laughs> Wait, better show up. He's like, you better be in my office tomorrow morning. Mayor, tomorrow is Christmas. You sure you want to do that? <laughs> That's how serious he is. And uh, Mrs. Mavilda is... It's, like, the weakest setup, because Mrs. Mavilda is trying to frame the lady for robbery, and the lady never even gets to the place where she was going to be framed, but her kids decide they're going to set off to see Santa and tell him, like, to, to, to save their mom. And that's the main conflict? Even though that's, like, the last 15 minutes of the movie? Yeah, it's it's not well paced at fucking all. No, it's it's really weak. Um, and then Mrs. Mavilda tries to cut down Mrs. Hopewell, the tree, um, and she gets struck by lightning. <laughs> oh, it's that was, Santa's that was kind lightning. Of funny. Is it Santa's lightning, or is it just was that just a coincidence? Was one was, of the kids one of the kids switched their Christmas wish to Santa? Please kill Miss Mavilda. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. You saw that creepy smile. He's all for it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Santa's lightning. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, like or or else or else God decided to kill Mrs. Mavilda and Santa's like, ho oh, oh, ho, I approve. <laughs> and and it ends with the glorious message You always win when you are good. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. That's obviously the message of this movie that's what this movie taught us right mm -hmm. how, how did the movie teach us that michael uh because the good characters were smiling at the end of it hmm it also does something i i kind of it's it's like a minor cliche in christmas movies and only like bad christmas movies but it starts with this, like, oh, I bet you've heard, like, all the Christmas stories, but you've never heard this story. So many bad Christmas movies do that. If a Christmas movie starts with someone going, I bet you've heard all the Christmas stories, but what about this one? It's bad. It's gonna be bad. Just guaranteed. You know, it's also another cliche. It's not, this isn't... This isn't just with uh, Christmas movies. It's just kids' movies in general. But like like you said, it's in bad kids' movies. Is the villain gets redeemed at the last second just because. <laughs> yeah. Like, there, like, there's no, there's no, like, no arc for the villain. There's no change for the villain. It's just like, the character's like, hey, do, do you want a second chance? Yeah, I'll take the second chance. All right, you're good. <laughs> uh, my, my, my canon explanation is that getting struck by lightning, like, lobotomized Mrs. Mavilda. <laughs> she just, like, can't think straight anymore. So now she's way nicer than she was before. <laughs> But yes, th this does not happen on screen. 
we should point out, but there is it just doesn't. like a line. The narrator is like, don't worry, she's nice now. The end. Well, Miss Mavilda, she's going to be all right. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 knew, I knew what to expect with this one. I've heard about it for years. Rhapsody Street Kids I knew a lot less about, other than there's some people who've reviewed it. And that it somehow got, like, some, like, pretty notable voice actors in it. Like, uh, quite a few, honestly. Jesus. Um, but... But yeah, I, I knew what I knew what I was getting myself into with this one, and yeah, it's as bad as everyone said it was. It's as, but there, you know, I mean, it's short. It's short, and it's made me laugh. I was there, a lot better with this than Avatar, honestly. Yeah, there are there are laughs to be had with this movie. I won't deny yeah. that. I think objectively Avatar is better, so I can't say that it's like this is the I can't say that Avatar is the worst movie I've seen for this for the show anymore. But it's just like so much more tolerable to watch this than Avatar. I keep calling it Avatar. It's the Last Airbender. The Last Airbender. Yeah. I mean, I mean this movie is also better than Avatar. Um, <laughs> yeah. James Cameron film. I, yeah. I, I honestly, honestly, uh, James Cameron Avatar potentially ripped off the Christmas tree. They are very yeah. similar. Yeah. Visually. I, I, was, I was thinking that while watching it. I didn't know if I wanted to go into that. Like, uh, maybe it's a coincidence. I just, they, they're, they're pretty similar. You're not, you're not like taking, you're not looking at comparing footage from like the, 2015 Christmas tree, are you, though? <laughs> no, I, I would never do that. Okay, okay. That was a stupid joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, have you, have, have you listened to any episode of this podcast? That's just what this <laughs> podcast is. <laughs> that was a new low. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. <laughs> uh, fair enough. <sighs> Do, do you want to move on to Rhapsody Street Kids? Yeah, please. We haven't even been in this on this a whole half hour, but I think we're going to have a lot more to say about Rhapsody Street Kids. So I It's think a we weird can, movie. I think we can transition here to Rhapsody yeah. Street Kids, a film which premiered on WB Affiliates Nationwide in 2002. And never appeared again. In fact, it completely disappeared after its television debut. Up until just a few years ago. I think 2015. Maybe maybe a little earlier. Maybe even a little later. I don't know. Around 2015. Uh, Lost Media Wiki founder Die Kate went looking for it. Uh, he got in contact with... Uh, the, the creator of the movie, the director of the movie, Colin Slater. And basically, Colin Slater, like, scammed him. Because he, he's like, oh, I only have it on this, like, super obscure format for, like, television broadcast. And it's going to cost a hundred dollars, like, a hundred and fifty dollars to get it transferred to to a digital format. But then he accidentally, accidentally changed it twice. So he made Dykate pay for both transfers, which Dykate did. And then uh, Colin Slater ghosted him without ever sending the movie. And uh, so there was a big argument about that. Finally, Colin Slater did send it and Dykate posted it on YouTube. So it's it's now on YouTube for free for everyone to watch. I would like to point out that the title calls it Extremely Rare, which you cannot put in the title of a YouTube video, because if it's on YouTube, it is no longer rare. Yeah, especially because it's like the second people see that title, they're all going to download it. <laughs> Rhapsody Street Kids is the story of Ricky, who's this uh, young boy who wants to be a rapper... And he wants to impress the cute girl that is... I guess she's supposed to be cute. Hard to They're tell all really this uncanny. animation. Yeah. Uh, 
he wants to impress her, but he doesn't have any money. So instead, he gives her, like, a teddy bear his mother gave him before she died. And she, like, rejects him and is like, oh, this, this teddy bear is disgusting. But then he writes a letter to Santa, and in the letter to Santa, he says that, that was, the, the teddy bear was a gift from his dead mother. And she's like, oh, no, I have to rescue the teddy bear. And so it's she and her friend and Ricky's friend go looking for the teddy bear and they find it and give it back to Ricky. And then on Christmas, uh, she gets a gift from her grandmother and it's the exact video box that <laughs> Ricky had asked Santa for. So she brings it over to Ricky uh, as, as like a great Christmas present. Um, yeah. You and I debated if a video box was a video game console or just a VCR. The, I have the, no idea. The movie has no clear answers for us. Yeah, if you want to, like, have, if when you're doing a Christmas movie and there's, like, the gift that the main character wants, you need to elaborate. If you're going to give it a weird name like that, you need to elaborate what it is. Yeah, because, like, this thing doesn't show up in the movie until, like, the very end. So there's there's not like a shot early in the movie of him like oh I wish I could get this video box yeah no it <laughs> um terrible terrible movie all around there is concept art of this film floating around and these characters don't look awful in two D but it's like someone took a two D drawing of these characters and like tried to just make the 2D character a 3D character with, like, as, as many, like, awkward, slightly flat pieces they could, and they all look so terrible. And yeah. That doesn't even begin to get into the horrible animation problems with this movie. The way the characters walk... Right, they're, like their feet have this motion that sort of mimics the way human feet do, but when humans go up on like the balls of their toes, the, the, the toes stay put and the rest of the person goes up. In this movie, <laughs> the toes just go down. So like, it, it never looks like they are walking on the ground. It looks like the ground is just like in the background of them ominously floating around and flapping their feet what'd you think of it michael um i thought it was a lot more amusing than the christmas tree i, I was actually laughing a good bit and then there's parts where all of that comes to a halt and i'm unhappy <laughs> i really hate every time it breaks into a song which granted it only does like twice and it's weird <laughs> that it does that yeah, it's why why are there two songs in this movie? <laughs> like again, it's only 40 minutes, but still. I mean, maybe some of Ricky's like freestyling is supposed to count as a song too. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's but it, maybe but I mean like at the very least you need to throw in some background music or something for it to be a song. I I I think it's mostly just they got the actress who played Belle in Beauty and the Beast, and the actress who played Ariel in The Little Mermaid, and they're like, well, gotta give him a song. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is uh, truly a horrendous looking film. I have a soft spot for some, like, really bad uncanny 3D animation with, like, shit like Rat Boy Genius. I knew you or... were gonna mention Rat Boy Genius. Yeah, yeah. The, the comparison is obvious. Yeah, and then there's another, he's not on the website anymore, and apparently, he, I don't, he might be a controversial figure now, I don't know, I don't know what he did, but I've heard people say stuff about him, but you remember that uh, old animation where it was like, oh, there was like a really creepy Tom and Jerry one, um, shit, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what it's like most popular one was, i I will send it to you and you can put like I put the guy's name on the screen or something and edit it. I don't know. Um I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to... I, I was thinking of Pam Tree, but Pam he Tree made... I don't think has done Tom and Jerry. I remember what it was now. He made the really creepy 
uh, Johnny, Johnny, Yes, Papa animation before that became like a big trend for some reason. Um, it was just like this really horrific animation, it, but stuff, I don't know. Like I, I find, <laughs> I find amusement and stuff like that. And this movie kind of had that. Yeah. Um, like if this animation were in like an uncanny, creepy shit post YouTube video, I'd be like, this is brilliant. Yeah. Um, the thing with Rat Boy though, why I'm so defensive over it is even though it looks like app, like it looks horrible, but what's neat about it is one, it has a strong enough fan base to where there's like really nice looking fan art and animatics of the characters. So you kind of do get to experience what it would be like with a actual budget Two, the creator is self-aware. He says that he wishes he could actually get good animation for it, but he just, it's just like, he, it, he, <laughs> it's just a lot. Like he doesn't have those types of resources. Three, whenever he makes like a fucking Minecraft background, it's incredibly well done, like super detailed. It's a, I know that sounds, oh, he makes the backgrounds of Minecraft, but he legitimately does a fantastic job with them. It's incredible. And four, the music is outstanding. It's actually a really well composed series. This movie doesn't have anything like that. Nope. Some of the voices are okay. Well, should we talk about the voices? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. This film is produced by Nancy Cartwright. The, the voice of Bart Simpson, um, and several other Simpsons characters, who does appear in the film as a bully, basically just doing the Ralph Wiggum voice. And I told you, it makes complete sense that in this universe, Ralph Wiggum is the bully. <laughs> that is the standard for this universe. It's just like, who's, who's the bully? Ralph Wiggum. <laughs> oh... It might be, might be, it might honestly be more similar to Rod and Todd, Flanders' two kids. Along with Nancy Cartwright, there's a lot of notable actor, uh, voice actors and actresses. I, I mentioned Belle and Ariel are in the movie. Um, yeah. Mark Hamill is in the movie. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. He's barely in it. Yeah. Um, Clint Howard is in this movie. And this is in clear violation of my rule that I said last time Clint Howard showed up, which is that any movie with Clint Howard can't be all bad. I was wrong. <laughs> Rhapsody Street Kids is all bad, uh, even <laughs> with Clint Howard. Clint Howard doesn't even come close to saving this movie. Um, let, let me make it clear when I say I'm amused by parts of it. It's like kind of just because of how chaotic it is. There's parts where it's like, if this was in one of those shitpost YouTube videos, like you mentioned, I could believe that it's, like, supposed to be, like, it's intentional. Like, it's supposed to be funny. It's self-aware. But I do think it's just, like, poorly directed, and it, it's, like, a so bad it's good kind of thing. This, in some places. And sometimes it's hard to watch. This film is what I like to call an endurance bad movie. Because pe people will say, like, oh, there's good bad movies, and then there's bad bad movies, Right. Like, a good bad movie is, like, Batman and Robin. A bad bad movie would be, like, Meet the Spartans. Mm -hmm. I maintain there is at least one other type, and that is the endurance bad movie. And I would say this of The Christmas Tree as well. It's a movie that is not good, but is amusing in how horrendously terrible it is that it's fun <laughs> to watch with other people. Because at least you're suffering together. It's fun <laughs> to suffer through these films together. Yeah. Right? Like, like Batman and Robin I could watch on my own and laugh at. Yeah. This, this is like, no, I have to watch this with someone else. But if I'm watching it with someone else, it's really funny to just like, oh god, we're watching this fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think about that scene where... They're chasing after the kid with the scarf, and then one of them grabs onto it, and it's just, like, sliding face down on the ice, and it's just, like, this really chaotic scene with the characters running around, and it's like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> uh, Schmitty is the best character, because he has, like, the yeah. dumbest fucking lines. He throws a toy dinosaur <laughs> at one of the girls, and he's just like, hey, Nicole, duck! I mean, dinosaur! <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> we, we without going into too much detail about this because I don't want to sidetrack us too much. It's like that one time where we were writing our little series that we do as a joke, 
and we kept having characters say, what the spam is this? <laughs> In reference to Food Fight, even though it had nothing to do with Food Fight, it's just <laughs> intentionally writing down the dumbest thing you can think about. Uh, uh, we should contact Colin Slater and see if he'll do Caillou the New Adventures for us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Do the, do the 3D animation. Take our designs and make them 3D. Then Nostalgia Critic can be in one of his movies. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I was actually planning on doing a full review of this movie, like like a Matt's Funtime Bad Movie Show episode for this movie. And then on the same day, Nostalgia Critic and Phalus put out reviews of this movie. And I'm like, all right, overnight this movie has become passe to talk about. <laughs> um, I'm not doing a full review of this. I was planning on doing a Christmas quickie for it this year, but then, you know, we started doing Hollow Victories, and I'm like, okay, you know what, this would be better on Hollow Victories. I would rather talk about this, c compare and contrast this with the Christmas tree, because that's a good matchup. Yeah, no, these two were meant for each other. It's, uh, I think visually... Visually, the Christmas tree is probably better. Uh, I, I would say undoubtedly, yeah. Yeah, I, I just like the visuals in this movie more. Because they're funny to me. <laughs> Where the Christmas tree is, like, bad and really uncanny and, like... But, like, okay, there's... Like you said, there's some movements where it's, like, a little bit fluid. And if they made like, the pupils on the characters smaller, it wouldn't be all that horrible. If if the Christmas tree were on in the background at, at like a an event or something and just like you couldn't hear what was happening, you might be able to ignore it. You might be like, ah, oh, bad animated Christmas movie, okay. Mm -hmm. You could not ignore Rhapsody Street Kids. You'd be like, What the fuck is this shit? You'd be like, it's like some middle it's like a middle school student showing off his school project. What is this? <laughs> Yeah, that's the um, thing. I swear, I have friends who have animated better stuff than this. Like, <laughs> like people I know in real life just, like, animating better stuff than this for, like, a college course. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I, uh... When I was in high school, we had, like, this 3D animation class, and most people dicked around and just, uh, didn't actually do the work because the teacher... Uh, kind of allowed that to happen <laughs> um and uh but i remember there was a few people that were trying to do it um do like actual animations i i did like a south park thing it probably looked worse than this movie did um but i was trying and then but then there was like a classmate who made like this sonic animation like um, i was like oh wow that actually does look pretty decent it was better so that like yeah i can definitely confirm that there are high school students who have made stuff that look better than this because there was a couple animations in that class that actually looked pretty nice <laughs> in comparison to this. This... I think this might be the worst 3D animation I've ever seen. Um, like that's, that's a low, low bar, but this mm, movie clears it. Because at, at, at least for something like semi-professional, like this aired on television... It and on television no has voice actors. Yeah. Like video Brinkato's bad, but I don't think it's as bad as this. Food Fight might be uglier. I think Food Fight is uglier than this movie, but Yeah. This movie but doesn't have enough detail to be ugly. Well, yeah, here's the thing. I would honestly rather look at this than Food Fight because Food Fight... Like, the reason Food Fight's uglier to look at is because they do a lot of gross-out humor. Some of the characters are genuinely disgusting to look at. Um, and they did that on purpose. But it, the animation's more fluid in that movie. It's more expressive in that movie. It looks like, it, like you know, there's more detailed backgrounds in that movie. I... Yeah, it sounds like I'm complimenting Food Fight a lot. Everything about Food Fight is horrible, but yeah, this is much worse than Food Fight. <laughs> in terms just, of visuals, at least. At least, just, again, at least it's shorter than Food yeah, Fight. Yeah, just in terms of animation, this is much worse than Food Fight. There food is... Fight is a feature film. This is 40 minutes, so it's better than Food Fight. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I, I talked a little about this film's backstory. There is a little more to it. Apparently, like, one of the producer's kids tweeted, like, this long tweet thread about this movie. So I'm getting my information from this tweet thread. Uh, if this turns out to be fake... This, that's my source. Uh, this is my source for this. Just but do a pinned comment. This tweet thread uh, goes into, like, the her, her father was, like, a producer on the film. Apparently, he didn't even look at it until it premiered on television. Um, Ooh. <laughs> so he was incredibly disappointed. Um... <laughs> Allegedly, and this is not from the tweet thread, this is from other unconfirmed sources. So this is a big ol' allegedly, Matt is not saying this actually happened, but allegedly, Colin Slater met Nancy Cartwright through Scientology, because Nancy Cartwright is a big Scientologist, and... That's how Nancy Cartwright got on board this Christian Slater, uh, Colin Slater. Ooh, let's not bring Christian Slater into this. <laughs> no disrespect for my boy Christian Slater. Unless he's done <laughs> something terrible and cancelable I don't know about. Colin Slater and Nancy Cartwright met through Scientology, and, like, Nancy Cartwright called in a few favors with some voice actors she knew. Um, and that's how this film came to be. Yeah. Uh, that was a little confusing to me at first. I'm like, why would Scientologists want to make a Chris Christmas movie? Isn't Christmas like a Christian holiday? Apparently Scientologists love Christmas. Like yeah, I mean, Christmas is huge for Scientologists. Mm hmm Cause, you know, they're all about turning religious stuff into way to make money. Yeah. I, I try not to religion bash on this show, but I'll make an exception it's, for for on this channel. But I'll make an exception for Scientology. For I'll Scientology. make an exception. <laughs> I, yeah, I also don't want a religion bash, but it's like if it's a religion where it like intentionally tries to destroy families, then I yeah I I, I think you can make fun of it. Yeah, no, not a Scientology fan. No, nah, me neither. Um. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm just going back to what you said about the producer. Just imagine how, like, because it would be, like, such an immediate regret, you know? <laughs> it, it's, like, it's not like there's, like, build-up to it where it's, like, okay, where is this going? Like, with the Christmas tree, you would at least have a few moments of, like, okay, the flipping through the pages, animation, I guess, looks okay with the book, you know, and all that. You have, like, a kind of standard sound and narrator, and then you get the reveal um, of what it actually looks like. Rhapsody Street Kids, it just takes you right in. You get, like, a few snowflakes that show up on the screen with some titles, and then you're looking at the town, you're looking at the characters. <laughs> oh, I would have loved to see that. I would have loved to see that. You're looking at the random 2D clip art that is just awkwardly stuck in the middle of this 3D movie. That looks better than any of the 3D models, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez I feel like you would be equivalent to if um I was in charge of an animated film and the producers had no idea what I was doing then it was just like the Mackle and Zatch animation with like stock photos <laughs> and then they saw that like what the fuck no <laughs> uh, yeah no I uh like I said, it's 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 a, it's absolutely a bad movie, but it kind of kept like it, like you said, it was kind of one of those so bad it's good movies. Not 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 so bad it's good, so bad. Well, how'd you phrase it, it again? I I call it an endurance bad movie. It's okay. fun to watch with other people. It's fun to yeah. like mutual suffering. I was yeah, I was pretty amused by it. And I think I would have gotten fucking tired of it if it was a feature-length film. But it's 40 minutes. I got th through it. Ooh. There's scenes... What? We could talk about uh, the sequel bait at the end for uh, Rhapsody Street Kids A Bunny Tale that was supposed <laughs> to be an Easter movie that got cancelled because of 
the negative reception to this movie. That's what that's what it says on IMDb is the negative reception of the movie. I think it was more likely the producer just watching this and going, "Nope, no, we're not making a bunny tail." <laughs> not doing a bunny tail. Sorry, guys. Mark Hamill to this day is like desperately trying to get it started back up. Apparently, Mark Hamill doesn't even remember recording for this movie. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Even though he was in Colin Slater's other movie, Dinosaur Island, which, uh, that has Macklin Zatch potential. <laughs> Is, uh, the, the 2014 Dinosaur Island, like, it's live action? No, no. Uh, what year? 1994? 2004. 2004. There's a lot of Dinosaur Islands. Oh, okay. Yeah, this looks more like his style. Yeah, no, it's it's the exact same animation style as as Rhapsody Street Kids. Mark Hamill's just a fan of this stuff. He likes it. He gets it. <laughs> and he he's gonna he's you know he got like a phone call one day about an old project of his. He was like, <gasps> and then he was so disappointed when it was Star Wars. Mark, we're gonna make a sequel to your biggest movie. Oh, we're finally doing Rhapsody Street Kids Bunny Tale? <laughs> no, 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 Mark, we're doing Star Wars Episode 7. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know if I have. Is there anything else you wanted to say about this one? I. Not really. I think I'm good. Um, yeah. Shorter discussion, but to be fair, they are shorter movies. Yeah, and like they're, they're yeah. both like forty minutes ish. Yeah, All we're right. not too far behind. We're like ten, like we're normally we'd be done by the hour mark. We're done by the fifty minute mark. And I mean, we we still have to vote, and we still have to talk about it next time. So we we got a little little to go. Yeah, maybe, maybe we can hit the hour mark. We'll see. This is close enough. Um, yeah. So I guess it's time to vote. So Michael. Um, I think, I, I think I, I like Rhapsody Street Kids more. It looks worse, but it was more amusing to watch. It's more chaotic. The voice acting is better because they actually got voice actors to be in it. Um, and I mean, also give it a, like, given it a, not really props to the movie, but props over a Christmas tree. It picked a simple enough story to where they were kind of able to do it in 40 minutes while again, a Christmas, the Christmas tree is just like really rushing through it, really just trying to get it over with. While this one, yeah, they they tried to make funny scenes with the dogs chasing them and whatnot. It's, again, it's, it's fucking horrible. It's fucking trash, but an effort was potentially made. <laughs> and I don't think I can say that about the Christmas tree. I think the Christmas tree was a lot more boring, and the only thing it has over Rhapsody Street Kids is it looks nicer, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good in the slightest. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I'm a little on the fence because I feel like the Christmas tree is more like it. It's it's more acceptable as a movie, but I don't know, man. Like Rhapsody Street Kids, I think is more entertaining. Both yeah. both as a complete film. It's got more energy than the Christmas tree. It's got weirder stuff to laugh at than the Christmas tree. And plus just the backstory is really funny. And you know me. I'm I'm a guy who loves a bad movie with a good story behind it. When, so, when the bar is so low yeah. for both movies, maybe it should just be which one's funnier. Well, I'm, I'm almost like... <laughs> The thing I think is putting me over the edge with Rhapsody Street Kids is the backstory, which is not the movie's fault at all. That's nothing in the movie is making me say Rhapsody Street Kids. But I'm like, you know what? I like that. It's a funny story. So I'm picking Rhapsody Street Kids. Um, it's the winner. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it is unanimous. Uh... 71% Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa compared to 29% The Christmas Tree. That's with 62 votes. So you do the math there. 
Um, all of the comments are in support of Rhapsody Street Kids. Um, most of them just f- saying, like, oh, because of the voice acting. Uh, yeah. One, one person says it's better because of Great Grandma, who we didn't even talk about. We didn't talk I, about yeah. Grandma. I was actually, like, getting ready to say something about that because I realized that we did it. Like, yeah, what the fuck was that about? Uh, according to the tweet thread that I mentioned earlier, she had lines in the original script. And it just got replaced with, Sure, I want to hold that shit with some of the kids these days. <laughs> Why? Rhapsody Street Kids wins. <laughs> so, uh... I, I guess that means Doug Walker was right. The the Christmas tree is the worst Christmas special. It's the worst Christmas special ever. Oof. I would shout for real, but it's late. <laughs> so next time on Hollow Victories, we I we actually had to change this last second, but you guys don't know that. I didn't even have to bring that up. Michael didn't even know what I was planning until this morning. But yeah. we, we've decided to push that back for reasons we want to have a guest on. So instead, next time on Hollow Victories, it's the matchup of 90s pop acts cashing in on their 15 minutes of fame. It's Vanilla Ice in Cool as Ice nice. versus the Spice Girls in Spice World. <laughs> Lovely. That's... I'm looking forward to this one. I, lo- I love these movies. Um, very, uh, <laughs> very different movies, but also very similar in a lot of ways. So I think it'll be fun. Um, yeah, no, it sounds like a good one. I, uh, anything else to say? Uh, no, not really. Uh, uh, I'm looking I mean, forward to that one. I, until then, I guess from all of us here at Hollow Victories, we wish you happy holidays. And yes. what can you say but Christmas? If you're good, wait, how's it go again? If you're good, <laughs> if you are, uh, you are always win when you are good. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, for my co-host, Movie Michael, I'm Matt Presents. See you in the next one.